YouTube, what's going on? Got a lot, a lot of cars. We didn't have a lot of cars the last couple of videos in terms of quantity. We did talk a lot, though. But uh, let's take a look. Die cash show finds. We'll go over some stuff that I found there. Very interesting. And then we'll get to some things we found over the past couple of weeks. Found some stuff on the pegs. So we'll take a look there. But, boy, we got a lot of stuff. Let's start out with just this loose vintage cars. Found some really good ones. Let's start out with this thing. This is, I think, only one or two Xylmex. Xylmex. Xylmex or whatever. We know that these are kind of like before Yat Ming and things like that. And these look like a cheapo, but they do have metal base. This old Mazda. <laughs> so it's missing the gumball, but I just... You know, if there's halfway decent, at least mostly complete. If I see it, an older vehicle, older stuff, and this has got to be from the 60s, 70s. Just, uh, just, just cool stuff to add to the cases. You know, I got a bunch of loose cars collection, and we'll do a zoom. This also would be kind of a cool car to customize, although it's kind of light on the detail, as you can see. Good suspension still works. Definitely has been played with, and the car's been around, you know, 40 plus years probably. So that's kind of cool. More than that. Yeah. So Mazda GT, it's kind of like the old RX cars, the old rotary cars. Overseas type of vehicle. I don't know if they brought these to the States, even though it has left hand drive. Look at this thing. Opening door, too. You know, we always look at the high dollar or the the modern castings most of the time so it's good to see how they used to do it back then look at that so mazda xylomex xylomex or whatever <laughs> i think i think that's the last time that's probably gonna go away now this is a casting i've always wanted i probably have had it when i was younger but don't remember it because it is an older one i mean this is like 80s like early 80s and they only ran this car for a little bit before they got rid of it. Um, but yeah, here's the old Datsun 200SX. Now this is Hot Wheels, so this is the, what they would look like, you know, in the States. So it's got the super fast wheels. Still doing good. Gold paint. I didn't go to the Hot Wheels database for this to see exactly where this fell in the lineup. Um... But from my memory, you know, there's a red one for sure. Might have been silver. Hot Wheels people know about this. Uh, would have been a four-cylinder car. But it is rear-wheel drive. And it's nice to see the old-school riveting there. You know, heavy, heavy car, thick. But now this, you know, it's not all heart-rotted out. has some graphics treatment, but... This one's cool because this is kind of like high detail back then. Now, of course, we got, we'll be looking at cars from the late 90s into 2000s when we look at some Hot Wheels, 100% or 100% Hot Wheels cars. One of my favorite series. Um, it's a little too young to be into the smaller cars to appreciate what, what was on the pegs. And they were actually, you know, still expensive back then. Um, they were still like, you know, 10, 15, 20 bucks, depending on if it was a single or a limited edition or a multi-pack. But we'll get into that anyway. I'm almost done with these vintage cars. Now, this is probably the oldest one I came across. And this was in a loose box. You know, when you go to these shows, some people, and this is what I've noticed at this one, because this is the, these are the shows here. Uh, you pay a couple bucks, you go in, and then you see the vendors. Some guys, they're selling their own personal stuff. Some guys are brokers, dealers. Some guys definitely scalpers. And I've seen some of those tables, and that, that's my personal opinion on this show. I go to it a lot, I like it. Um, whenever it's around, I think it's around twice or three times a year, something like that. Don't have to travel far. Um, I like it, but there's definitely, you know, when when you're out there locally hunting... And those castings, you never come across them. And you try, 
and then you also all of a sudden you go to the show and there's a few guys that have multiples so <laughs> but that's common i'm sure anybody in the whole country and your other countries you know now i'm talking about the united states only you might come across that and that's probably what's happening you know and there's of course online sellers look at this magenta super fast matchbox lotus europa what a car so colin chapman car got that 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 center chassis the lightweight chassis that these lotus cars had um small four cylinder mid-engine just cool car um very now we were talking about you know we looked at those cars from the 70s and 80s that hot wheels and that xylomex or however you say it but look at the detail now this is you know back then and they still do this i guess today but a lot of 3d printing but this was hand done pretty much sculpted from drawings you know sometimes they'd use that tracing thing they'd they'd make a bigger uh sculpture and then they'd scale it down but look at the detail if this car was stripped down and repainted it would look quite nice but when they're kind of like this they have a lot of originality to them they're not completely blown out the car has all its parts and you know it's a little broken up but that hot magenta is i don't know how it's good it's showing up on camera it's obviously it's hard holding on for dear life as you can see um i did i do watch the cars um when they come home i give them a good scrub so that way it really exposes what's left of them a lot of times there's a lot of dirt in the cars I try to look at them a little bit before I snatch them up and make sure there's not they're not totally far gone. But castings that I don't have that I've liked, you know, when I look at the casting catalogs over the years, um, then I spot them. I definitely like to get them. I've gotten the old Ferrari and stuff like that. But this car, she's uh, she's got some miles on her, but but nothing's wrong. The axles aren't bent or anything, and she rolls good. And it's nice to see that you know it's been played with. Uh, not at all bad the cars can handle it opening doors and look at the the detail on the um the way they were able to do the plastics so really really clean lines on the steering wheel windshield wiper detail the metal work is very thin and delicate as you can see the doors and when you look at the new opening parts matchbox cars they're not as delicate now they might still be able to do something like this, but maybe this car's not as safe for the original intended audience, which are small kids, things like that. So I could see the difference, but the collector cars, even today, even though there's a lot of, a lot of hinge right there that's exposed, it's still, I mean, it holds its own, I feel like. Yeah, the scale's not perfect. I wonder if it's notated over here. I mean, because this is a small car, so it's like the size of a 164 scale Caprice, so <laughs> maybe a little bit big. That's got the hitch, too, which I like. So anyway, there she is, Lotus Europa, 1969 copyright. So 6970 is when they were going from regular wheels to super fast wheels, and it's nice to see that. I'm sure, you know, if this car was with the regular wheels, it might be worth more money. It depends on if the car was just starting to get the regular wheels and the regular wheel were the regular wheels it was released with them first but then they quickly moved to super fast so usually that you know the regular wheels ones might be worth a little bit more just because they weren't producing that many so anyway <laughs> let's move on a couple more and then we'll get through it this is a rare one for me i don't see this too much at least in this condition and this definitely shows the worldwide nature of Matchbox. Matchbox at the time, you know, is based in England, still produced in England. This is uh, a '74 copyright. Again, I didn't look this up to see all the multiple variations in the years, but this is probably one of the earlier ones. This is a Renault. Uh, I think it's what is it? Twelve, seventeen. I don't remember. I don't memorize them as much as the American cars. Renault seventeen TL. Number 62. This has, you know, the wider super fast. Rolls very good. Great competition for Hot Wheels at the time. And matter of fact, with the active suspension on Matchbox in the 70s, you know, Hot Wheels was going to a heavier axle 
and more rigid construction and these are definitely more elegant cars i mean as a play toy uh sometimes you could argue that hot wheels had more exciting subject material but that was all in the eye of the beholder obviously if i was in the 70s growing up which i wasn't um i probably would have gravitated to matchbox even more because they were quite the vehicle quite the car beautiful nicely finished satin black metal base with suspension and when you roll this car it just rolls so nicely Let's take a zoom. Detail's good on this. Again, it's a little bit toyish, but it's not not crazy bad. I probably will, because it's, it's such a nice car. I'll probably touch up the black a little bit. Um, I don't think it'll affect the value of this particular car so much anyway, and it'll look nicer. Renault TL, look at that. So really, really cool details on this thing. You got the number plate back there and all that. Um, we're not going to talk too much about this. I think this car was front wheel drive, but I can't remember. All right, definitely something like a four cylinder. The uh, dashboard got detached, I think, so it doesn't lay very good in there. But that's okay. The glass on that's actually really exceptional. So this car, even though it was in the same bin as this one, this one definitely was like definitely not beat up on as much. And then. The last couple, we'll just bring them up together, same color. I always like Pantera, so this is De Tommaso Pantera. This is a Hong Kong car, 1975, still Lesney. And this got the fat old tires on it. That rolls like really like butter. This thing feels like it's on air suspension. This is really nice, the way it rolls. It's surprising. It has been played with, but... You can see they put the ridge on those wheels to really give it the le least amount of friction. You know, because your, your contact patch is so small. And then here, this is going into the 80s. This is one of my favorite Matchbox castings because this is the stuff that I was used to growing up with. This is an early one. As you can see, it's got the arch wheels on it. So look at the, t look at the wheels on this. Big, thick ones. And they quickly moved away from that because that really was a 70s axle setup, more so than the 80s. They used them on 80s vehicles, but they quickly got rid of them. And this one really doesn't been played with that much. It's got nicks on it, but if you store them in a box and just have them sitting in there, they're going to get nicks on them with other vehicles. <clears throat> but look at this thing. Early IROC car. Uh, original casting date, I think... Yeah, this one's 85, so car came out uh, 83, so relatively new. I like how the, the, the body casting uses the dash. They use the dashboard, same thing. You'll notice that on all the other ones. Now, the ones that came after this, I'm supposing, because they have the, the dot wheels. Those are the my favorite Matchbox wheel of this era is those wheels, but... This actually looks cool because it makes it look like it's from a different time, even though it's the same casting. Of course, we got the 8-cylinder in there, and this is by the time they were doing the tune port injection, as you can see. Or multi-port, tune port, whatever. So that's kind of cool. It matters so many F-body third-gen cars um, that have been cast, starting from when they were new back then. This is a very popular car. All right, so we've looked at some vintage stuff. Let's <clears throat> continue. So we're going to go up. Excuse me. We're going to go up the years until we get to the modern era. We're going to try keeping this moving. So I'm just going to do this randomly. I got quite a bit. And, uh... 1957 Chevy 150. This is one of the early 100% cars. When you look up the database, I did a little looking because I wanted to remind myself. Basically, 99 to the mid 2000s is when this was a, was a happening, and they were all over the place. This is a 2001 release. Um, some of these have the original price tag on them, so pretty cool. The way I open these up is I just slice it instead of having to open it this way because it destroys the whole box. So I'll just slice it that way and then, you know, the original 
paperwork is in there and all that, and it's got the box, and I save the screws and you know so on and so forth. But just take a quick look at the box information. These are pretty cheap. This one really, I mean, uh, this is one of the gentlemen that I've bought from before, and got a good table. A lot of good variety, older stuff, not always new stuff. And he just is, you know, he probably buys them from collection or whatever. But very, very good prices. And cars are always sealed. So I'm just lucky to have it. But even if you were to find something like this, all the cars that I'm showing you on eBay, if you look at them up just to give yourself a, a, a rough idea of what you're going to be spending, um... They're not crazy money. I mean, you could spend more on a Mini GT in most cases. And if they're more than that, then wait. Because there's always someone that believes the cars are really under 10 bucks. believe it or not. I mean, you can get these under 10 I wouldn't pay more than 20 on anything. You know, some of the cars, like the Porsche. There's a Porsche 911 Turbo that's in this series. They're tons of money. I mean, they're, they're usually 100 to $200 <laughs> if they're sealed. Same thing with the Baja truck, which we talked about last time. So there's some outliers in this stuff. So if you do find that, the Ferraris also are, go for a lot of money because the Ferraris were done. But all the Hot Wheels Ferraris at this point are going to be top dollar. But if you look at this solely as a collection to get a really cool casting, with a little bit of Hot Wheels twist to it, meaning that it's modified some way, I would suggest this, and these are the closest thing to this was the Ertles back then, but they didn't always or pretty much didn't have metal bases. I'll see a lot of them plastic base. They were detailed like this though, but I would argue that the Hot Wheels has a little bit more longevity just because the cars are very well put together. Some of them have the screw base like this Chevy, and some of them are riveted, and we'll look at both. Shiny axles, so they use the polished axles. And, you know, this casting came out then, 97. Now, this is an 01 release, so this has been around in multi-packs and as individual. I like the turquoise over white. These are 164 scale, so you don't have to worry about them being um, at a scale like they are typically with today's Hot Wheels premium cars. The Elite 164 that we talked about, or Elite 64 that we looked at with the Gullwing, this is basically the OG of it. So revert, you know, the, the Steelies. Look at these things; they're just exquisite. Good tires, little, you know, the bias ply tire, roll cage. Um, this one, I believe, has a '97 copyright because I think there was a uh, NASCAR as well, or you know, stock car um, casting originally. I think that's what it is. But it makes a really cool street street. Um, cruiser it's got the duels on it and who knows if those are two or four barrel who knows i mean the two barrel uh, was popular too doing double two barrels so just depends on the output of the motor so we got the exact you know the <laughs> side x exhaust again this is i think pretty much the nascar casting that they recycled Separate chrome, a lot of times they paint this. That's the other thing that I wanted to talk about on this casting, and you'll see that repeat itself on some of the Hot Wheels stuff. And there's varying degrees, and I think it's like when they were released of the intricacy of the detail. And look at that. This car's pretty good. You know, the headlights are kind of funny because they got the little headlight brows on them. And the grill is not blackwashed, and actually that's an outlier too. Usually they are blackwashed grills, so it brings out the detail. And I'll probably do all that to this car. I don't think it would do anything. I think people um, like this enough to buy it if I still choose to sell it. And I might actually blackwash those steelies too. So anyway, I love the 150. It rolls very good. Um, some of the times there's a little bit of wobble to the... To the wheels but that's only because they just need to be taken off the axle again all right next car let's see what we got okay now this is really sweet um 1959 cadillac eldorado woody what a car so 
This is one that's been released, and I've actually looked at this online to buy it, but, you know, what keeps me from buying a lot of stuff, when it's probably good, it's just having to suffer through paying through shipping. I just don't, you know, if I just be patient, usually I'll find stuff, and I don't necessarily like all the popular things. So, a lot of times with my taste, I'll find what I'm looking for at a good, reasonable price. This is one of the original, or the one of the first um, sets. So you can see how the box was different. It's a little bit smaller. It's got the, the logo, the older logo. And it's got this. So looks a little different. It's got some information. I think this is based on a real custom. But I I never really looked it up. It's big. So again, calling out that it is true 164 scale. We're going to look at this, how big this is. And it's a casting they used a few times. So this is a 98. Yeah, so really, really early. I think 98 uh, as a 99 release, which is typical, um, was from when I looked at the one of the databases, I think was the first year they were out. Um, let's take a look. So what a car. It's got the orange fade, as you can see. Kind of a satin finish on the paint job. Um, it's not really glossy. It's good quality, but yeah, it's not sh super shiny. But the fade's awesome. And it's just a two-seater. The rest of it, they just took all the seats out. Uh, it looks like a converted ambulance because Cadillac never made a factory station wagon. They're always, you know, coach belt. If they did see station wagons, and they've had station... Well, actually, I should say that. <laughs> Sorry. Cadillac like made station wagon, but that was the CTS station wagon. Um, but I think that's the first one. I don't think there was ever any other factory wagon before that. There are cars that certainly look like they're made at the factory, but they had some really good coach builders, especially in North America. Um, but most of the time, and when you'd see them in quantity, is what we see with this surf rod, is when they were ambulances and hearses. Um, and they're still hearses, but ambulances kind of were a little bit more popular. So anyway, this is car is a slick top car. It's got no roof rack on it, and that's kind of what I like about the car. Now, they put the wood grain treatment on it. I think this car came out in yellow and green. I got the orange version, or I just happened to come across it. I would have taken any of them. Big Cadillac engine. Looks like it's got a full setup on it. Actually, it almost looks like it's a Hemi, but I, I think the early Caddies, too, had the plugs up there, but I can't remember. All right. So we got the wires and the wide whites. Now, this car, I needed to adjust this a little bit, so I did drill it out. So, excuse my mess. I actually have never done this before, but I was getting a little annoyed with this one. Definitely, I busted the bill a drill bit in there, so that's that's good. But anyway, it snapped back in, so I'll just leave it alone. And the other thing I had to do, since this was in its tomb since 98 or 99, these surfboards got bent. Um, so I kind of bent it, them straight enough, but uh, there's a bar in there. And that's how they attach uh, or slide in. So you can see um, right down in there, there's a little little receiver. So, but these are kind of cool. These are plastic, and they have the little fin, and you know it's just a cool little detail. So basically, you just just slide them in there until they they go under, and that does enough to keep the friction on them to hold them in so kind of cool so you can still take them out and display them if you want to you know do it like this or whatever like the old surf photos but what a cool car um it would have been nice you know if you had this car pie today it would be nice to put on air ride to slam it and then have a very nice cruiser i feel like it's a very good proportional car um the tail fins are a little different to me they look a little small and the taillights look a little small but we have a lot of body right here so that might be you know throwing it off maybe if we cover that it'll look a little bit different so they're calling this an eldorado woody 
But this front end was on the other caddies too. It wasn't just on the Eldorado. So the four door was a four door car and a limousine, and they had all the same treatment: the Deville or the Coupe Devilles or the Eldorados or the Sedan Deville. One of those cars. They had that treatment. So there we go. I recommend this. And again, this is another one you can find online. It's not going to kill you to get it. And I highly recommend it. It's nice to have a, something different. Something older. You know, these cars are going on 20 years. It's so crazy. Or over 20. For some of them. Okay, here's another one. We got three more. Three more to do. This is another one that I really wanted to find. Um... They're, they make a turquoise one, but um, this one's red. And I was like, you know, for the price they were selling them, I got a few of them. So this is the more recent box. I think the last style box in the singles were like this. So this is a Mercury Woody bus, same as a Ford. What is it called? Yeah, Merc, they don't even call it a whatever it is. And there's our information there. So look at the date. This is 2000. All right. So these are just nice stuff. Taking a quick trip. This one's got the uh, torque thrust on it, which I really like. And just a nice, nice car. Um, having a nice, nice Woody. And actually, after the resurgence of all the die cast companies and the new, the new die cast companies... It's funny that they don't um, they don't have this car. Not too many of these exist in, in cast form. There's a lot of model kits. But you don't see the 164 scale. There's been a couple 118s. Maybe there's a 124 scale. But really no 164, especially like this. Now this one's cool. It's got the flathead with the supercharger on it, which I thought was kind of funny. Um, you really have to be a diehard flathead person to do this setup. But there she is. Now, I have this on Zoom, so let me correct myself. I'm looking at this engine. Let me see. I'm trying to see it through magnification. Yeah, it looks like a blower. I thought it was a generator for a minute, but it seems to be that's the blower. Well, we'll, we'll consider that a blower because the pulley goes all the way to the intake. So it looks kind of like a generator up here. It's kind of cool. But anyway, let's zoom in. Tires are cool. Metal base. This one's riveted. You can see that they have a hole there for the screw that attaches it to the acrylic base. You know, freeing these cars really takes a little bit of time because you got to open the box and you got to do this. And then they have a bunch of old rubber bands on this. And a lot of people say how it stains the paint and stuff. It does, but... Many times, if they haven't been stored in an extreme environment, you can just take an alcohol pad and, and slowly uh, get that goo off. And this one had it pretty severe around this. And for the most part, you can barely tell it was on there. A little bit of the rubbing there. But uh, you can use a silver paint pen for that because there's really no chrome. I just love it. It's got the flat roof because they had the, the uh, vinyl roofs on these, the fabric roofs. Just a cool car. So, it's a little crooked rolling, but not bad. I did take the wheels off the axles, original axles, and made new axles for it that were straight. I drilled out the hole in the wheel. Um, but, yeah. So, this one also has a hitch because it came as a multi-set. And they had one that was a this, and it was towing like a little quarter midget or something car. So, that's kind of cool. Anyway, Mercury Woody. All right, two more. Um, ooh, this is a really good one. I really like this. Let's take a look at this car. So, fifty nine El Camino, and this one was done. I'm trying to read it, two thousand as well. This is a super cool car, and they did a couple of these. I know they did one with flames. This one's actually the one I kind of prefer. It's kind of chill. It's a turquoise over white car. 59 was, the, I think, the first year. I don't know if they had a 58. 
can't remember. I think 59 was the first year for the El Camino. Pretty sure. So look at this bad boy. Just awesome. It's got a rake on it. If you wanted to wheel swap this thing with, with uh, drag setup, it definitely would take it. So, 59 cars really had a cool look to them. This one is a, a really good. I mean, the, you can see the hood's got a little gap to it, but look at that roof. So the roof is done really well. So is the molding on the, around the door. Um, you could see, even though it was sealed, the clear plastic got a little yellowing to it. So I would say, you know, if it was on a UV lamp or something like that, but that would clear up. But the rest of the car is in really good condition. You can see that they, they, this one's kind of cool. They pre-drilled and tapped it for you because they're using the rivet posts as a way to secure it to the base. So I thought that was kind of cool. All you got to do is run your drill on that for a second if you want to take the car apart. And you already have a tapped uh, hole, which I thought was kind of cool. Let's take a look at the motor. I think this one is just a regular hot rod setup. Let's take a look. So this one looks like it's got triple deuces on it. And can't tell if, yeah it's a w engine in it so that's kind of cool so old school setup dry power you know you get dry power i think on 59s pretty sure there's the bed and you can see basically a station wagon car frame with a different body i'm pretty sure that's what they used this one has the molded in hitch it's part of the base and it is metal so this one also came as a set towing something one of the car trailers. That's probably another thing I'm trying to locate. One of those sets because they have a SoCal set um, with the belly tank racer. And that's got that little small single axle car trailer on it that I think would be cool for my for my collection. So hopefully I can find that. Um, but look at that beautiful paint. It says El Camino Tampa on there. So this is just a really cool car. Even though it's supposed to represent 90 Street Machine. This this looks like something that looked fine today, just because those wheels are kind of classic looking, and modern because uh, low profile tire and everything like that. So that's kind of in that time frame when the cars were starting to get updated and people were thinking about actually putting brakes on the cars and all that stuff that would actually stop. And that was kind of the beginning of it, late nineties. I mean, they had some trendsetters in the eighties, of course, uh, even the seventies, but really. It started to come in mass because the OEMs are developing cars. So basically they recycled, you know, the disc setups and stuff that were coming on the late 70s, 80s, 90s cars and just putting them on the hot rods. It became cheaper because basically you're just duplicating was already around. <laughs> anyway, next. All right. So this one is one we want to talk about here. Look at this. This is one of the cool double sets. This one is... What does it say? Yeah, O2. So this is a double set. This is one of the um, Blood, Sweat, and Gears um, set. And we, you know, one of the original sets, the Foo set with the Barris a la carte, that was one of these. This is the other one of that. And look at that. That's the old, I kept that on there because that's awesome. The old Meyer tag. So 2002, 17 bucks. You know, that was a lot of money. I think that was one of the reasons I just wasn't spending that kind of money on this. You know, my thinking back then was, you know, 20, 30, 20, 30 bucks, 15 bucks, you can get a 118 scale. <laughs> you know, that was my thinking back then. Of course, I didn't buy all the 118 scales, so I don't have to worry about uh, running out of space. You know, when you're a young kid, you don't have all that money, or a young, a young adult. But now we can indulge a little bit. So... We got Little Coffin, and we got the other one that I really wanted, because I'm trying to collect all the, the Barrisks and the um, raw stuff. Beatnik Bandit. It's kind of like the Mysterion, sort of, with the bubble. So this one is just awesome. Just old school stuff. So it's got the opening bubble top that, you know, these guys made these things themselves. They knew how to do the acrylic. They probably had to make a bunch of those bubbles to get them to go, but... Obviously, Southern California hot rod, you have putting that clothes down in the sun, you'd probably kill yourself. <laughs> it probably had some sort of ventilation, but they really weren't running air conditioning on these things. So, But, yeah, just a really cool operating mechanism. They did paint the uh, bubble top around there, so they matched the paint on it. And it looks very good. 
and the tampo work is good. I almost think these are um, water slide decals because they do chip. As you can see there, I didn't really touch this car that much. Um, but yeah, you could see some of that stuff's lifting off. So I might have to put some um, decal set on that or something like that. So you can see how cool this thing is. It's probably off of a, you know, a Ford chassis or maybe a custom chassis. Look at that. These are just awesome. So two different style wheels, tires, cheater slicks on the back pie crusts. And then you got your T-bar or your, your yoke steering. And we're looking at this under magnification car small. And it just, it's it rolls good. Let's get this down a little bit. Yeah, so I just love these things. I mean, look at the detail on that. So really wasn't appreciative this is back before a lot of the newer stuff with the with what we have today with 3d printers and mocking up stuff and having the more advanced computer but they're pretty pretty good but this is very very good stuff all metal you know so i don't think you can make this today and have the same price point what they had back then you know and i know there's inflation but it's just awesome so and I love how they're still kind of cheap, you know, relatively to what you're going to get with the car. And I'm not going to get all these cars, but I'm going to get definitely a lot of these hot rods because these are actual hot rods that were done. So look at this one. So <laughs> this is metal. This is metal. The fender's metal. And look at the tires. So these are the type of tires that I wish the big three would do, the big four. I'd like M2, Auto World, Johnny Lightning, Green Light to make wheels and tires like this. This is just awesome. I almost want to buy a bunch of these and use these on other cars, but we'll leave it alone because, you know, what a great cast. And look at all the detail. So we have the six one barrel carbs on this motor and it looks like you know I can't, I can't really tell exactly looking at the cylinder head you know it looks like a hemi to me but it could be wrong just seems like one of course your accessory drive up there is all chrome and you know they tampoed this and then they have the either a speedo or attack right there probably attack on the cowl and then they got the tiny headlights a separate grill piece and look at the bars on the grill so they didn't just like paint that with paint they made the separate bars so those custom grills that these guys are doing the the shape of the exhaust the way it flows against the the running board how slammed it is so this is all one piece of you know casting so let's look at how thin that roof is it's got the roll bar in there. Just awesome work. And look at the taillights. So this car is sweet. Now it's got a little backspacing problem with the front axle. Um, and the this grill is slightly kiltered, but not, not a lot. So, But it's such a... And you can see there's a little bit of a wobble there. Not bad. That can be fixed. But look at the torque thrust car. Look at these wheels. They're just dead on. And this one, I actually took it off the, the tire and heated it up a little bit, but it was still bad. So this was, you know, screwed down to that base, and this tire was sort of a casualty. So 20, 20 plus years will do that to a tire. So hopefully, you know, just leave this car chill. Maybe the rubber will relax a little bit. I got a lot better. It was a little bit even flatter than that. So, but other than that, you know, I was able to get all the marks of the rubber band off and all that. So, what a cool car. I'm so glad to share it with everybody. So, it really makes a statement once we start getting all the customs out. And we're starting to see, you know, see the fruits of our labor trying to collect these things. So, we're having real deal show winners from the 60s on the lot here and probably you know we've had the same cars in the display window 
you know, sometimes we change the cars in the garage for the background, but I'm really thinking this needs to be in there, and we'll put this black car with the more modern stuff. I don't know. Time will tell. But, you know, those two, my, it's just awesome. Look at that. It's like you're back in the 60s. So, all right. Kind of taking a little time on that. Just because it looks very good. These cars are just very good, and I'm trying to, probably to my detriment, spread the word about these a little bit more. This other gentleman down the way well, got some Greenlight Hobby exclusives, and I said, these are the ones I've been looking for. Of course, my favorite cars, Caprice and Diplomat. So you can get these online if you don't know anybody that sells these locally. So you can see. So... Basically, you can buy these in bulk. People that uh, customize these and make original or existing police departments, they use these blanks to do that. And then these are vintage cars. So we got the dip. I'm not going to spend too much time on Let's do a quick, quick look. Um, I say you notice these kind of private runs, these exclusive runs. The base is a little bit different. Like, the zinc is really polished out. And actually, the for, the best factory lights and grill application I've ever seen yet, and I've got pretty much all the releases of the the uh, M body cars. You could see the detail in the grills. This is what the, really all of them should look like. So there's no flashing, nothing sticking out, and then the black portion goes all the way here where it should be needs to be. And you know, it still has afflicted but the slammed ride height. But other than that, it's fine. So, very happy with this. And it doesn't really matter that it says it's an 80 because really no too much difference between an 80 and an 89. So, you can kind of think of it as any year you need it to be. And then this one, not so lucky with any year, but pretty close. So, this is an 80 Caprice. It's supposed to have a split headlight, but they just kind of painted on there. But this is one of the few Caprice that actually put the correct uh, dog dish on it. You know, they do the full-size wheel cover correctly, but for the 9C1, dog dish is supposed to look like that. And then you got your um, individual taillights on this version. But good-looking car, so I just wanted to capture on film. And then we'll go from there. So those two are going to be here. All right, now let's do one more police car. <laughs> 2019 dump truck. We looked at the dump trucks. But, I don't really buy this dump truck, but this was on sale. So, I was like, okay, I'll get it finally. And it's really just solely to to go with my NYPD cars. Uh, at first, I was kind of laughed at the idea of a police department owning a dump truck. But, I actually just typed it in. I said, what do they use a dump truck for? And it's for, <laughs> basically, they do use them because it's a big vehicle. And what I mean by that is... They have multiples of these, and they fill them with sand or gravel or whatever, whatever they use. And they basically will park them in a, such a manner that they basically are a movable barrier that a vehicle can't just crash through. So, temporary, but immovable. So, they'll ring these around important events or whatever, political stuff or terrorism threats, things like that. So, they have these dump trucks that fill them up, and they kind of park them across the road and uh, block traffic basically <laughs> so that's what they use the dump truck for but they do have it like this not the uh, most accurate because again Greenlight's only working with one granite that they can use so it's like this but uh i don't think it has tag axle and it's a little shorter wheelbase and it's not a u dump it's a it's a regular dump truck more square but the graphics are similar so we'll go with that and this will look cool with the trucks in my NYPD fleet. You know, it looks cool when you have all of them together. You know, all the NYPD stuff. So, pretty neat. Probably should get two just because they're supposed to be parked, you know, a bunch of them together. So, be good to take a photo. We've talked about this casting before. So, if you're more curious about it, uh, I got a bunch of dump truck ones and the others. Just noticed that I'm missing my bulldog. So, wonder where that is. Is it in here? 
No. Well, we'll have to find one. All right. So there she is. And let's hope we can find the bulldog hood ornament. All right. Whittling this down. <laughs> Dodge Challenger. So this is the late Dodge Challenger before it went away until the nine or the 2000s. This is the 74. So basically everything killed this car off that you want to talk about. But there's some information there. It was one of the big one of the big deals. Basically, these older cars that were kind of conceived in the '60s as '70s models weren't really produced with the thought of the new regulations in the mid to late '70s that were coming. So that was more of the reason too. Uh, to keep this line going, not only do you not have a consumer demand, you have to update the platform, and that costs a lot of money. And a lot of times when you're using those re regulations that happened in the 70s, you really had to change the whole car. It couldn't just be a facelift. So most cars from the 60s and seven, early 70s limped on to about 75, you know, from the old designs, but very few made it through um, to the end of the, you know, the end of the 70s into the 80s. We've looked at these cars before. So just take a look at the differences. They have a different core for this casting. This is different on the 74. Obviously, this whole treatment up here. Hood's basically the same. Windows, doors, that's all the same. Taillights are different. Bumpers are a little bit different too. But you don't have to do too much changes. Of course, they use the same chassis. They got two. They got the RT chassis and the AR Cuda chassis where it's got the side exit. But... That's it. And then we got this car is a 440 car, I think. Yeah. So there you go. There's a sister. Uh, what, what do we got? Is this this version A? So hopefully version B will show up soon. Dodge Challenger. Next. So complained last time when we looked at this casting, I couldn't find the color, the other color, but I did. So here's the silver GT40. This is the 65 road going version. I talk a little bit about the history of the feud with Ford and Ferrari. So, silver. The silver on this car shows off the casting very well. It's almost like a Zamac or bare metal car just because the silver is very light. And you get to see all the details of this casting very well. So, very big fan. This car came out of the package really good. Didn't blackwash the wheels or anything. The exhaust is straight on this one, unlike the blue one. And that nice clean build that Auto World's known for. Very, very satisfying car. Rolls perfect. And they are small. There's your transaxles peeking out there. So, very happy to found both. So I don't have to worry about it. You know, if I come across extras, I do, but... At least I have it. All right, next. This is casting looked at before, but this is just the color. A lot of times at these grocery chains and different retails other than Walmart, they usually have some of these cases come back out. So this is, I guess, from last or two years ago. Last year, two years ago, whatever. I just never saw this cat. I and mean, they just put out the black one or the blue one or whatever the hell it was. So now I got the gold one. So, very cool. Um, there's your defrost lines. And then the RX-7. Just just great, 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 great detail. Look at that RX-7 right there. Taillights are done perfectly. Wheels and tires, excellent. Rolls good. It's got the nice contrasting interior. That's in the correct shade. And then we have our um, reverse hood. with your rotary just I mean I love this car such a great casting I don't necessarily this is one car that you know if I had to pick of the 80 sports cars a little bit less down on the list just because of the power out of it but it does handle good and it looks good so I'd want, I want a car a little bit more power than this but uh, it's still cool and these are all but gone now so it's nice to have one in scale uh, oh so, go to Greenlight real quick. I got their casting fine of their crew cab. I always get the Auto World ones typically. This is the showroom series number two. Again, there's the real window sticker on this truck. And this is pretty inexpensive for trucks today. 
total price on this 45 grand um but you know because a lot of these cars are about 50 so <laughs> they're saying it's an stx truck with the xl whatever the green lights casting's not bad they've had this one out for a minute most of these look atrocious because they have the bad wrong tires but I think they're realizing when they're doing a stock profile tire on these trucks, it's okay to put the lower profile thick one on. And you can see how much better this looks. And that was one of the reasons I wanted it. The second reason was they have lensed headlights. Unlike the painted ones on the green light. So, or on the Auto World. So I like the detail on this. And it was a nice clean build. The Shroom series seems to be going through the production process pretty well you won't see any of the fogging or anything on the windows and the wheels look very good so i like this thing it has a little bounce to it though when it rolls i haven't really taken the wheels off yet so we might be able to get some of that wobble out but other than that this is nice and they have this car out as a hitch and tow series so if you need a trailer or something and you want the casting you can always get that that package as well and this one i think how'd they spec it out what does this have in it so it's got the the crap motor it's got the 27 v6 turbo which is not the best i mean but it's there so that's the base engine and it's got decent pickup for sure they got the running boards on there so i like this it's a cool casting all right not too many. I don't need to complete those or get a bunch of them. I think one of the last cars we're going to look at today, because I'll save some for next time, is this. So this is an 86 Conquest. Dodge Conquest. Plymouth, Chrysler, and Dodge had these. And they sold them. And so you could have a Chrysler Conquest, Dodge, Plymouth. And this is their first release of it. They have the Mitsubishi Starion, which is the JDM equivalent. Um, and Auto World's released that as a limited right now. They're going to probably have it on a regular uh, premium release soon. But I might get that. Now, it's about 12 15 bucks on their website, but it's cool. It's got the cool graphics on it. But very good casting. They paid attention to a lot of areas on this car. Namely, the ride height and the back spacing are dead on. And even though there's a tight gap, they don't rub. So it's kind of like the way Mini GT does it, where it's just, you know, they make it happen. The car needs to sit a certain way and needs to have a certain f tire size. And uh, Auto World was able to accomplish that on this vehicle. So rear wheel drive car, uh, Mitsubishi vehicle. Mitsubishi Chrysler had, you know, um, uh, partnership uh, with each other financial and otherwise and and they basically chrysler you know when they had holes in their lineup they'd supplement it with mitsubishi products not only the sports car but they also had the mini truck before the dakota came out they were using the you know the mini max or the mighty max or the hell it's called um mitsubishi and then they called it the dodge d50 so you know they're very very popular and they they did colts and stuff like that back in the 70s which are also i believe mitsubishi cars so really whether this is the mitsubishi or the chrysler product it's basically the same vehicle tsi four cylinder and i think i think it was just injected i don't think it was turbo i think you can get a turbo on it um hood opens very good you can see the four cylinder mounted longitudinally Got your, this one looks like it's got an air intake on it. That looks like a cone filter to me. It's kind of funny. So very cool. And it's got the correct wheels. They tool up the wheel and they put the shadow line on it as well. This car was, I don't even think it broke 200 horse. I think it might have had a turbo. I don't know these as much as like the Super or the 300 ZXs. But a very, very low adoption rate back then the car was not extremely popular as a as an item and of course they're low low volume so these just don't really are around anymore so it's nice to see it here 
So you can see the TSA Conquest and the uh, tail light treatment. I think that's looks like Arizona, but I could be wrong. I'm always a little curious to see what the plates are from. Maybe I'll be able to see that later. So there we go. Dodge Conquest. Look at that thing. A lot of people like this. The other one's the white one. And hopefully we find that one soon. Well. Went through a lot of castings. I didn't spend 100% of time on everything. But kind of wanted to share with everyone what we have come across recently. So... Lots of cars. Aren't these great though? I think out of all these right now, very happy to have found those. So maybe we'll see a different uh, bunch of cars in in the shop window this time. Well, thanks for all the new subscriptions. Uh, more to come. Hopefully, we can roll out videos a little bit sooner. Um, maybe we can carve out a little bit more time for that. Hopefully, you all have enjoyed it today, and. Till next time, we're going to have more cars, so that's not going to stop. We'll probably see some bigger stuff soon, some bigger scales, but we're still getting 164 scale in. M2, it's got a few castings to look out for, so hopefully we get those in soon. And uh, maybe some uh, mail calls too, so we'll go through that as well. Thanks for watching. Thumbs up, subscribe. Be well. Till next time.